Chesil Beach, right at the bottom of Dorset, connecting Portland to Abbotsbury. A phenomenal beach is the largest tombolo in the UK, stretching eight miles across the western coast of South Dorset. As a result of this remarkable structure, this lagoon is formed, the Fleet Lagoon, and that is why I'm here. In April 1942, a man called Barnes Wallace wrote a paper on a method of attack in which bombs are bounced across the water until they hit their target, thus sinking, then much like a depth charge, exploding underwater. Wallace then explained how this method of attack would prove useful against enemy hydroelectric dams and enemy boats that had moored in calm waters. After taking much interest in Wallace's theory, the British military got Wallace to prepare such a bomb that could carry out these tasks. My name's uh, Dick Daly. I was a swan keeper at the time. Eventually I ended up as a swan herd at Abbotsbury Swanery. Apparently there was a gang of people filming. I could see it from where I was living. You could see this plane flying down low, going through the um, fleet. I often wonder what it was doing. Knowing that in the 19th century, cannonballs were bounced across the water to increase their range, Wallace began experimenting by bouncing marbles across the water with a slingshot in his garden. Tests then began here at Chesil Beach. The idea was that when the bomb was dropped, it had to bounce across the water, over the torpedo nets, and when hitting the dam, sinking and exploding blasting a hole in the side of the wall. The fleet was perfect for testing the structure of the bomb. The long stretch was ideal for testing the travelling distance of the bomb structure and the flat water was perfect for skimming on. On December the 4th, 1942, the Wellington bomber arrived over the fleet. It flew in from the northwestern side of the fleet up there and it dropped the bomb around here. Unfortunately, they never uh, informed the Navy who was stationed in Portland Harbour at the time. The plane flew over and they decided to open up with all guns. Luckily, they weren't very good shots, but uh, the poor old pilot, he, uh, when he got out, he went straight to the bathroom, being shot at by his own side. At a low tide, Wallace could row out to collect the casing to assess the effects of the drop on the bomb. Unfortunately, this time it disintegrated. On December the 9th, a new casing was constructed. Unfortunately, this one also disintegrated on impact. So obviously he had to go back to the drawing board and design a little bit better, making it of all metal. And he worked it out that they had to be about 60 foot above the water to get it right so it would skip along the top, eventually hit the dam, roll down to the bottom and where it, it was delayed action on the bomb till it ignited, cracked the dam, it never exactly exploded the dam, it cracked the dam and the weight of water done all the rest, it just forced its way through. This one or two still left in the fleet, in fact one was dug up not so many years back, the Navy was involved, a helicopter to lift it, two divers are digging under it because it was quite a biggish round shape, it wasn't the, the design they actually used on the um, the dams because uh, they were cylinder shaped, but this was a round ball shape. Here at Abbotsbury Swannery is one of the prototypes used over the fleet in March 1943. As you can see by the dimples in it, it's shaped much like a golf ball. Well, I was here in uh, 1992 when they actually got the prototype, this particular prototype out of the fleet. There were a number apparently, but this one was removed by the Navy, the Army, and Portland Museum, and the Strangways Estates that own the Swannery and the fleet. Back in the 60s, I often wondered why I kept stuck on this bit of ironwork. Couldn't make out what it was. And I had to get out the boat, put boards down on the mud, and heave the boat off, and that's what it was. It was one of Barnes Wallace's bouncing bombs. This is what the final casing looks like. This would then have been taken to Hearn Bay and Kent and packed with explosives for further tests to take place. On the 10th of January, 1943, a bomb successfully skipped 20 times before finally sinking. On February the 5th, it was confirmed that they could bounce a bomb over a thousand meters and remain intact. <laughs> <laughs>